when you first pick up your Tucana, there's a lot going on, there's a lot to take in. And especially when it comes to power, there's lots of ways to get power in and power out of the electrical system in the Tucana. So as a bit of a refresher, let's talk about power today. Now I should preface this by saying I am not an electrician. Um, I probably know enough to be dangerous. Uh, this is a combination of some bits and pieces that uh, I figured out myself and from the Facebook group and some advice from Song as well. So if there's anything that crops up in this video that isn't quite right, check for the pinned comments below. If I get any feedback or any, uh, any find out anything that's not quite right, check that pinned comment first before you start doing anything that I suggest in here, just in case I haven't got something quite right. So to kick things off, there's, there's three ways that you can get power in. The first one and the easiest one is the rooftop solar. Now that will work whether the red isolator switch in the kitchen is turned on or off, doesn't matter. If the Tucan is in sun and this, the sun's hitting the solar panels, that's going to be charging the battery. The second way is via the Anderson plug up near the hitch. Now, uh, if you've got a Tucana that is bought within the last month or so, I'm shooting this in, in January 2024, I should add, uh, you do need the isolator switch turned on for this to work. But Tucana's previous to about December 2023, uh, the Anderson plug will work with the isolator switch turned off the same way as the rooftop solar uh, does. If you're driving and you've got that Anderson plug plugged into your car, uh, you need to be a little bit careful about that. Newer cars have smart alternators and what will, what will happen is that um, it will try and charge the battery with the lowest amount of charge, which means you can be driving along, the smart alternator in your car is sending you all of the current back to your Tucana battery and meanwhile your car battery is getting drained, which is not what you want the next time you go to start it. So if you are using the Anderson plug plugged into your car and you're only kind of doing short trips, I'd either be looking to get a DC to DC charge in between those two, which will stop that from happening, or just don't plug it into your car for shorter trips. If you're doing a longer trip, um, as in a longer consecutive drive, you know, over a few hours, you might be okay, but it is definitely something to keep an eye on. If you're relying on using your car to charge the battery in here, you probably want to be looking for a DC to DC converter. Now, a DC to DC converter is not required if you're doing the solar blanket setup like I've got going on uh, in front of me here, but you do need to make sure that your uh, external solar panels also have the solar controller. You can't just plug a panel directly in. You've got to have one of those little controllers in between uh, the, the panels and the Anderson plug as well. And the third way is by plugging it into a power point. Now, if you're at home, um, the, the Tucana is sort of rigged up for a 15 amp connection and your power points at home are likely 10 amps. So you will need one of these little converters, a 10 amp to 15 amp converter. You can pick these up at any camping caravanning shop. I uh, can't remember where I got this one from. BCF or Anaconda or somewhere, one of those places, but any any of those kinds of shops sell them. Um, so if you plug it in at home, or if you're plugging it into a generator like I've got in this setup here, you definitely want to be looking at one of those 10 amp to 15 amp converters. If you're at a caravan park and you're plugging it in, a lot of caravan parks will be ready for a 15 amp connection, so you can just plug that straight in. But just, yeah, check if you're not sure. Caravan parks, a lot of them you're okay with 15 amps though. Now, if you are at a caravan park or using your generator or at home and you want to be using that to charge your battery, you need to make sure that the inverter switch here is turned to charge only. So charge only will uh, get the power out of the power point and use that to charge your battery and keep it at a good level. You're only going to need to want to turn the inverter to the on switch if you're trying to actually get 240 volts back out of your battery and we'll talk about that a bit later. All right, so that gets us to our um, uh, solar controller here and the inverter uh, switch here that I was talking about earlier. Let's get this out of the way. So this is off at the moment. Now, if I wanted to uh, charge this, so I've got it plugged into a 240 volt at home or a generator or a caravan park, charge only is the switch that I want to have it on. Uh, and that will then be feeding power from the uh, external power source, the 240 volts, and charging the battery. Now, this is not plugged in at the moment, so you can't, nothing's lit up here. Now, once I focus. So, if you look at these guys down here, um, if it's on bulk, that means you've got a fair bit to go. 
absorption is nearly there, and then float is what it'll do to keep the battery topped up without overcharging it. Uh, that's a fairly unscientific definition, but they're the sort of lights you're looking for. And this one does the same thing for the solar panel. You can see the bottom one there is lit up, that's bulk. So I've got a fair bit of charging left to do here today. But as the battery improves, we'll move to absorption and then the top one being float. Um, when I get to absorb, if I get to absorption at the end of the day, I'm reasonably happy with the amount of sunlight that I've got. Um, at the end of the day, if that's still saying bulk, I need to be a little bit mindful about how much power I'm using um, because uh, the battery has not topped up enough for, for, my, for me anyway. Now over here, you'll switch this to on like that if you're off grid like we are and then you need to use some 240 volts. So plugged in here, I have got um, a Ryobi uh, battery, the, the, uh, the cordless drill. I'll figure out my English in a minute. And we can see that that's lit up and that's working and that battery's fully charged. So those aren't flashing, but that is definitely enough to run, uh, to charge batteries like this. Now it's important not to get too carried away with uh, what you do with the inverter. Uh, it's rated, I think, 1,000, 1,100 watts, something like that. Let's just call it a 1,000 watts uh, for argument's sake to keep the numbers simple. So that's the maximum capacity of the inverter's ability to turn your 12 volt battery power into 240 volt power so you can plug in something like this. But keep in mind a lot of appliances, um, A, use a lot more than that kettles, toasters, those sorts of things are often, are often operating at about 2400 watts. So they're way beyond the capacity of what the inverter in here can manage. Even if you've got something that, that runs at a thousand watts, for example, what often happens with a lot of appliances is when you turn them on, they'll actually spike a lot higher than that. So say this thing is rated at, I actually don't know what that one's rated at. I'll use this as an example. Cause I know this guy here, this is a little um, uh, 240 volt uh, milk frother from Kmart. Now that is rated at uh, 500 watts. So that's okay, but when you first turn that on, that will probably spike, um, you know, closer to the 800, 900 thousand watt mark. Just for a split second, just when you turn it on. So the most that I'd be probably comfortably um, plugging into it is something like that. 500 watts is probably about your safe limit to run off a thousand watt inverter. I said, I'm not an electrician. That's just kind of what I've gathered. Uh, if you are an electrician watching this, uh, correct me down the bottom if you like, and I'll, I'll pin that comment. Uh, but this works a treat. We've used this plenty of times, never had any dramas with it, um, but I'm pretty sure it's 500 watts. Yeah, 500 watts. So that would be the biggest thing that I would plug in there. Toasters, kettles, forget it. It's not designed to run that kind of thing, but it is really good for charging batteries. So whether they're for your, your cordless drill or your power tools, uh, laptops, cameras, anything that, uh, you can definitely use it for any charging uh, of batteries and whatnot that are going on there. And there's a bug crawling up my leg. There we go. So what do you do if something goes wrong? Say you have accidentally plugged in something too big and blown a fuse or something's not working. First thing to do is isolate what the thing is that's not working because there'll be a fuse around for that somewhere probably. So there's two main locations for your fuses. Um, in the kitchen, um, in the cupboard on the right hand side there, there's a bunch of fuses on the wall there and they're all labeled. And the other place to look is uh, on the seat under the window or on the far side of the bed. Uh, if you lift that up, there's a bunch of fuses under there next to the inverter and they're all labeled as well. So figure out what actually is the issue. Is it power out via, you know, one of your 12 volt plugs or your 240 or is it power in? Or what's actually not working? And just go through a, a process of elimination to see if you can find a busted fuse and replace that. Now a busted fuse, of course, is a sign that something has gone wrong. So replace the fuse, but you do want to keep an eye on it and see if you can figure out, what did I do? Did I do something? that would trigger it. What what would have caused that fuse to, to blow up? I overloaded something somewhere? Or if you've done nothing wrong, maybe there's a sign that there is an issue and you need to get uh, uh, an auto electrician to have a look at it. Now, in terms of keeping an eye on things, if you're running the, the Victron uh, setup like uh, we've got going on here, so we've got the Victron solar controller uh, there in the cabin, uh, that, that blue box that, that we looked at before. Uh, I've also got a Victron uh, a wireless or, or Wi-Fi transmitter uh, back up under the kitchen there, little blue box as well. So with that stuff running, 
there's an app on your phone that can re- it's like it's really I'd be lost without it honestly in terms of keeping an eye on what's going on so if we just have a quick look at that now you can see here that um, in my instance I've got two solar control trollers um, one for the rooftop and then one for the external blanket that I've got and then the smart shunt there is the actual uh, that, that's the reading for the inverter itself uh, which is I guess more closely tied to, to what the battery's doing so with this I can keep an eye on uh, how much solar I'm collecting um, through uh, both the rooftop and through my external panels uh, and the one you do want to keep an eye in terms of how things are going uh, like I mentioned before is uh, the state the battery state so is it uh, bulk absorption or float in terms of how far the battery's got to go uh, roughly you know that's a fairly unscientific unit of measurement but uh, that's sort of a bit of a rule of thumb that I use in terms of how far the battery's got to go uh, and of course if I jump out of that and switch back to the actual smart shunt here that will give me an exact reading for what my battery capacity is like. Now you may or may not have noticed before, I've got a couple of mods going on here. So uh, this fella down here, this power distribution box, let me get down a bit lower so you can have a look at it. Picked this up at uh, Brisbane Caravan Show last year. So basically there's an Anderson plug coming in um, here to feed power to it. And I've got a thousand USB plugs here that I can, you know, uh, charge various things uh, with. Uh, as well as it gives me a bit of a, a meter there in terms of how the battery's doing uh, and the, the voltage as well. There's a cigarette lighter uh, adapter there, which it might be a bit hard to see in this light, and I can turn the whole thing off there. Now, this is coming back by an Anderson plug, which I've got fed under the bed, which I won't show you because that's a, a giant mess at the moment. It'll swing around here and come back. I probably should have emptied that before I started shooting the video, shouldn't I? Can you see it? Mm. Let me just take some of this stuff out. There we go. Okay, so on top of the battery there, I've got this thing here. So, oh, that's come loose. Better tighten that. So we've got these terminals here and a fused cable here, and that goes to an Anderson plug. And it's important that, to have this fused uh, because if something goes wrong afterwards, you definitely want the fuse to blow rather than setting fire to everything for obvious reasons. So with this fused connector here and the battery terminals to an Anderson plug, that then feeds down, goes through under the seats and into the main cabin area. And then that Anderson plug is what I've got plugged into that distribution box inside. But that's been really useful. All right, so that's the electrical system. As I said, I'm not an electrician. That's based upon stuff that I've gathered from around the traps. Uh, please, before you do any of this stuff, just check, check the comments below. Look for a pinned comment. If there's any corrections or alterations, they'll be there. Look for that first. Uh, don't forget the Facebook group is a wealth of information um, and Song is pretty handy too if you, if you need him and got any questions. Hopefully that answers most of them though. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, like subscribe and do all the other YouTube stuff. I'll see you in the next one.